Good morning and welcome to day one of the QuoFem tool training presented by the Neri Sim Center. Uh, today we're joined by Akash Bangalore Satish and Songri Yi, who are both, both postdoctoral scholars at the University of California, Berkeley, and are the lead developers for the quantification of uncertainty and optimization for the finite element method tool, which we are calling QuoFem. Welcome, Song Ri and Akash. I would like you to uh, go ahead and uh, begin this tool training. Um, thank you, Matt. Hello, everyone. My name is Song Ri. Thank you for coming to today's tool training workshop. I will start presentation. So today I will introduce you to Sim Center and CoFM first, and then show you new features in CoFM. And we will go into a little bit more detail in two of the method, which is global sensitivity analysis and also Bayesian calibration. So Sim Center is one of the um, Nihiri, Nihiri facilities supported by NSF. So NSF and Nihiri support number of like research sites, and majority of them are experimental research sites. And two exceptions are Sim Center and Design Safe. But um, still, what we do can be viewed as a virtual experimental facility. So in Sim Center, um, we develop research applications for, to, for natural hazard analysis. And on the other hand, Design Safe provides data storage and high performance computing workspace, which can be viewed as um, cyber in infrastructure. So we collaborate each other by, um, so we deploy our scientific workflow into Design Safe, and also we distribute our research applications to the public so that our user can easily access to these resources using um, intuitive graphical user interfaces. So this is Sim Center. Our um, professor Sanjay Govindji is our uh, director of the center, and we are software development team. Our team is led by Dr. Frank McKenna, and all the programs we develop is uh, based on close interaction with domain experts. So they are advising us on the directions. So the tools we develop is open source and extensible software tools for researchers in natural hazard engineering. So this figure in the right hand side shows our scientific workflow. Um, we combine existing methods, algorithms or programs database in our uh, fields, like we assemble um, jigsaw puzzle pieces. So what we do, what our scientific workflow does is to interface, make an interface template for its um, core components and uh, run analysis so that if user want to plug in their research effort into this workflow, they can um, do it with less effort. Another identity of Sim Center software, software tools are that uh, we are running UQ workflow. Therefore, all the random, all the variables of this analysis can be random variable, and therefore outputs will be also random quantity. However, UQ workflow requires like expensive, um, high computational cost. So we try to overcome this by carefully selecting efficient UQ algorithms and also providing high performance computing um, um, system on the design stage. So this figure um, it shows you the structure of our tools. We first have a backend components and external applications under the surface. So here the external data and application forms the core part of each puzzle pieces I showed you before. And this backend components wraps up these core um, applications and connects each other. And the remainings are 
front-end applications. So each front-end application combines these back-end pieces. First is CoFM, which use only cloud and UQ components, but that means this tool can be most general among others. And then there are three more research tools, which are specialized for each um, hazard type, which are net earthquake, wind, and tsunami inundation. So these uh, three tools aims, for, aims to get response estimates under each hazard. And then PBE gets the result from each programs and then run performance assessment. And finally, we have regional risk assessment tool that aggregates all these um, results. And as you can see here, we have version one for these two tools, and that means they are newly recent, released recently. So um, you may be interested in testing these tools, and if you can give us feedback, that will be really helpful in further improving these tools. But today we will focus on CoFM, which is the basic um, most fundamental tool among others. So CoFM stands for quantified uncertainty with optimization for finite element method. Um, other tools focus on helping users to generate event scenarios for specific hazard types and provide seamless workflow. On the other hand, CoFM is not limited to certain hazard type. Instead, all these puzzle pieces are um, given by user as a single simulation model. We call it FEM, but it's not limited to FEM and any computational model can be um, plugged in as this puzzle piece. And therefore um, it's flexible to problem and model types. And also all the latest UQ method in SimCenter are first implemented in CoFM and then propagated into other tools. Therefore, CoFM always has more strong UQ capacity among others. So this is brief history of CoFM. Until 2019, we had on we relied on Dakota Engine. It it's um, general purpose UQ um, analysis software developed by Sandia National Lab. They're, they support a number of methods, and we have implemented these five different methods. In recent couple of years, we have um, three more engines. Um, while Dakota is for like general UQ analysis, this SimCenter UQ is um, develop, under development to get response from like needs in our field. So, we try to um, implement algorithms that are more relevant to natural hazard analysis. So currently we have efficient sensitivity analysis, surrogate modeling, multi-fidelity surrogate modeling, and Bayesian multimodal selection averaging method. And then we are under collaboration with UCSD for the Bayesian method. So they provided us with um, currently, we have transitional MCMC algorithm, and also we will implement Bayesian filter algorithm in near future. And finally, we have custom UQ engine in case you have like UQ algorithm, UQ program, and you want to use our user interface for um, to interface with FEM programs. And one of the important thing is that um, our future plan can uh, depend on the user requested features. And therefore, um, if you have any questions, difficulties or suggestions, requests, you can go to our Sim Center forum and we really value your opinion on this. And we will respond in like few few days. So this figure shows you current status of CoFM. Um, if you have seen our pr previous tool training video, 
um, we had three different FEM engines and five different problem types and number of algorithms. Um, in recent development, we had increased this problem type to custom UQ and surrogate modeling. And we also added number of different algorithms. And then also for the FEM engine, now you don't have to have the model like corresponding to these three program. Now you can use custom FEM engine and also the surrogate model trained in QuaFem can be called imported in QuaFem and used for different um, UQ analysis. So we'll move on to interface, uh, user interface. But before that, I want to briefly um, give you the links for from setup guide to um, documentations. So we have uploaded these slides online. So there is a page when you can where you can download QuaFem. In the same directory, there is further core training material. So you can find these slides there. So now we move on to QuaFem user interface. Um, this is the screen you will see when you launch the applications. There is this message area um, which will show you errors or warning messages. And there's menu bar. Um, here we have, we now have example tabs, which can be very useful, I will show you later. And, um, and then we have input panel selection. All, all the UQ problems need to this definition of these four components. So um, we will go through one by one. And once all these fields are filled, and you press run or run at design save, you will get the result displayed in this result tab. Um, so first is UQ selection tab. Here you can select four different UQ engines. For the Dakota, I recommend you to check in our um, previous tour training video. For um, So each engine have like support different method. For example, in SimCenter UQ, we support forward analysis, sensitivity analysis, and surrogate modeling. And in the transitional MCMC method can be found in UCSD engine. And there is finite element method selection panel. So um, you can also select five different engines and one thing I wanted to point out here is that the model um, user provide should run stable for different possible parameters. So sometimes when QuaFem analysis fails, it can be because that um, the model analysis had failed. So we strongly recommend you to test the model for different set of parameters before implementing into the program. And then um, one very strong requirement for this model is that it should produce a result in a text file called result.out. So for example, if you have two quantities of interest, then the simulation result will be written in a result.out file, and it will be a list of two quantities. Um, so sometimes post-process script can be um, introduced to produce this result start out file. And the next is random variables tab. For um, this is typical Dakota, a random variables tab for Dakota engine. And the second one is what you can see when you select SimCenter UQ engine. So we support different input types um, not only parameters, but also data set and moments. For example, if you select moment, then for all, for different distributions, you only need to provide mean and standard deviations that we will like find appropriate parameters. 
And if you click this correlation button, matrix button, you will you can define correlation matrix. Um, one thing to consider is that correlation matrix should be um, positive definite. So if this condition does not match, it will give some warning message and it will not be saved. And then there is QI tab. Here you in you give the list of the outputs and its length. So this is new new feature in this version. So when you, so it is sometimes useful to specify output as factors. For example, when you have time history of response, you don't want to like put field, put, put every discrete time step as like independent output. Instead, you want to define like one output quantity and increase the length of it. One thing to note is that um, the sum of lengths of QI should match the number of outputs from the FEM script. So here you have two outputs and your FEM will produce two outputs, then it's fine. And the remaining is menu bar. In the example tab, uh, we have prepared number of examples. So if you just click any of them, we will automatically fill the input field. And what you have to do is just click the run button and you will get the result and see how this program works. All these examples are well documented in the user manual. And also we provide link to the menu and also to the Sim Center forum in case you find any um, difficulties or any bugs you want to report. So what I just explained was the front end part of CoFM. So remaining half is the back end part, which I will cover tomorrow. So when you use this program, it is very um, useful to understand how backend workflow works because we do not just throw the results to you. We, we have, um, we track all these interactions and the intermediate results are all being saved in your local directories. So if you, know that these data are saved, then it is useful when you want to debug or have more control on the analysis. So um, for remaining times, um, we will go into a more detail in this method. I will first give you um, some theories and example for global sensitivity analysis. And Akash will talk about parameter estimation and Bayesian calibra calibration throughout two days. So first I wanted to give you a general idea on global sensitivity analysis. So we have number of inputs and a simulation model and an output. And the question we are interested in is which input random variable are more influential than others. And global sensitivity analysis answered this question by quantifying the contribution of each random variable to the uncertainty in QI. So um, global sensitivity identifies um, which random variables are most responsible to the uncertainty in QI. So by this way, it identifies high and low impact random variables. So why is it useful? First, it can give us insights on the pro problem. I wanted to cite this, refer to this paper by Vetter and Teflanidis. Um, they applied sensitivity analysis to an earthquake engineering problem. And based on that, they were able to get insights such as some of the parameters can be in general neglected. And some of the other parameters have a considerable contributions to 
total risk under some conditions. So based on this kind of insights, we can make informed decisions. And also, it can also be used to simplify engineering problems. For example, you might want to remove some of the random variables to have to gain computational um, efficiency. Then you might want to remove the ones that has low sensitivity values. And then um, how do we quantify the sensitivity? So here, um, SOBOR index is one of the most popular measure for the sensitivity index, which is also known as variance based sensitivity index. It has this kind of form. It's pretty simple and we can understand it intuitively. So consider you have a model with two random variables. Um, you can draw scatter plots of QI and each random variable. Then in the first case, you can see that even though random variable value changed, change QI did not change very much. Um, that means this random variable gives low impact to QI. Um, on the other hand, if you see this figure, you can see the mean of QI does not really depend on the random variable values. Therefore, a mean, mean is almost constant and each variance will be very small, like almost zero. In that case, we have like very low sensitivity value. On the other hand, in the second case, um, random variable obviously affects the quantities of interest and the mean of QI is, is depends on random variable values. And therefore each var variance will be larger. So in this way, um, this SOBAR in, in index measures the sensitivity of each random variable to a quantity of interest. Then how can we get this estimate, estimates of SOBAR index? Um, we can think of Monte Carlo, but for Monte Carlo, it requires like double loop of sampling process. So it's generally considered to be time consuming. So there are alternative approaches that are more efficient. One of them is quasi Monte Carlo and the other one is probability model based approximation method. And these two methods are available in COFE. So I will now go through the examples. Um, so we are interested in this trust structure. We have model written in OpenSeas and there are four variables. It has probability distributions and we want to get sensitivity index of each variables to the vertical displacement at node two and three. So first is UQ selection panel. Here, um, uh, we, we specify number of samples, but one thing to notice, I want to point out is that this number of samples does not actually correspond to number of simulations. So this is part of our user manual. Um, it guides us like how to estimate the number of actual simulations. So it can be something to consider if your simulation model is very expensive. And then we um, put our um, FEM model in FEM panel. So what we do in here in input script is to run analysis and save responses in a file named node.out. And then we call post-process script to convert node.out result into a result.out file, which we need, we need it eventually. This is preview of the input script. This is OpenSys model, and we can see that our four random variables 
are here defined under PSEC command. So this PSEC command is recognized in like sim center command for to define random variables. So since our tool recognizes this p, p set command, we automatically fill this random variable tab with the values user provided. Um, and the following values, um, these values are not actually used in simulation, but it will be used to fill in like, um, to auto-populate this random random variable tab, but user can change it. So once these variable names are provided, user can change the distribution and the parameter values. And finally, they define quantities of interest. Um, so we are interested in node three and node two displacement, and we have special Post process um, in FEM that reads this quantity of interest values and collects only the response that corresponds to these um, names. And if you click run button, we will get you will get the result. So first one is main sovereign index values. Um, this follows the definition I just showed. And the second one is called total sober index value. It has slightly different definition, but in most practical cases, they are they gave similar values. So, to, but total total index also considers the interaction terms between the variables. And here I wanted to point out that um, p the load had high, high sensitivity values while the geometry cross-section size of upper truss bars had the lowest sensitivity values. And you can also check that in here. So there is a tab called data values. In here you have spreadsheet for your all of your samples so you can play around with it. And if you draw scatter plots between P and response, we can see clear increasing trend, while if you um, plot scatter plot between AU and response, it's it does not have clear trend. So that makes difference in sensitivity values. Um, because, because of the time limit, I will skip this demo. But um, in the later part, Akash will show you some live demos. And we can do the same using um, SimCenter UQ engine. In this engine, we implement another method that is based on uh, approximation. Um, here we can select, as, as I introduced, we can select more distribution input, distribution types and input types, but to consistent, to be consistent with previous example, we will um, use parameter values. And then um, here we also support advanced options for global sensitivity analysis, which is to allow defining group wise over index. So we can group, um, for example, we can group the variables related to geometry and assess sensitivity as a whole. So this will be the result. Results are basically um, have the similar structure. We additionally provide like graphs for visualization. And here we can have like additional insight that like sensitivity of categorized, categorized um, category wise sensitivity index. So. Um, here we can draw a conclusion that external load parameters are more important than collection of geometry parameters. And um, this is very brief comparison between two methods. 
to help you like choose the algorithm. First one is Dakota uh, engine, which was quasi Monte Carlo method. So we can see that um, it takes some time to convert. So we, we need to consider that the actual number of simulation runs are higher than what we have provided. So it, it will require like um, six times more sim simulations than what we define. And then uh, this second method converges faster. But one thing to note is that um, it does not guarantee the exact convergence into the exact value, although it is quite stable. So user might want to um, consider two factors and select the method. And for this second example, in sensitivity analysis, sometimes um, the users are only interested in their relative ratios rather than their absolute values. So in this case, if we normalize this um, sober index, then you can see that it, it gets like pretty exact value within even um, 10 or 50 example, samples in this example. But um, one thing to point out is that Sim Center UQ does not yet support remote running in design safe. So if you want to use that feature, you want to use Dakota. In that case, um, every procedures are same, but at the last moment, you you might want to log into design design save account and press run at design save instead of run. Then it will require you to get job to um, give job name and submit. And then after a few um, seconds or few minutes, you will get the result from design safe and the result will be displayed in um, response panel. So, um, so I will now toss to Akash for the Thank you, Sangri. I start sharing my screen. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Akash. I'm a postdoc at the Sim Center, and I will be presenting the features in CoSim related to doing calibration. Um, today, we will cover items one and two on this outline, and the rest of the items will be covered on day two of the training workshop. Uh, I will begin by providing an overview of the calibration options in COFIN. This slide shows the setting of a calibration problem. We have a model for our quantities of interest, uh, which maps the inputs to the outputs. That is given a value of the input. Uh, we can propagate that input through the model to find the corresponding output uh, quantity. Uh, but now we are given data which is a realization of the quantities of interest. Now, given the data, we want to now invert this mapping to find the value of the input such that the corresponding output is equal to the data. But the data is coming from a measurement in the real world. Uh, our model for the quantity of interest might be an imperfect representation of the real process that generated the data. Let me just... So even if our model for the data generation process is perfect, uh, there might be measurement errors in the value of the data. Uh, due to these reasons, it is not possible to find the value of the input that produces the output exactly. Uh, knowing this, we want to find the value of the inputs, which makes the outputs most closely match the data. So in the context of deterministic calibration, the inputs are also called uh, design variables in the terminology used by Dakota. 
we specify the lower and upper bounds on the values of these inputs. And the problem is one of optimization. Our objective is to minimize the sum of the squared residuals, which is the difference between the values of the outputs and the data. So this is the deterministic calibration problem. Another approach to calibration is based on uh, Bayes' theorem. Again, we have our forward model, which maps the inputs to the outputs. In Bayesian calibration, our belief about the values of the inputs based on any prior knowledge about the problem is modeled by a probability distribution. There is a corresponding distribution of the outputs. But now we observe some data, which is a realization of the quantities of interest. And uh, given that data, we update our belief about the distribution of the inputs. Correspondingly, the distribution of the outputs is also updated. Um, so this is done by using Bayes' theorem by computing the likelihood that a particular input value produced the observed data. Next, we will see how these two kinds of calibration problems are solved in COFIN. There are three options in COFIN for running calibration workflows. Two of these are part of the Dakota UQ engine. Um, and the third option is under the UCSD UQ engine. As uh, we have seen previously on the, on the previous two slides, there are four components in defining the calibration problem. The data, the model, the inputs, and the outputs. In all of these three workflows, the data is provided in the UQ panel along with, the, along with selecting the UQ method. Uh, the model is specified in the FPM panel, the inputs are defined in the RV panel, and the outputs are defined in the QOI panel. During this presentation, the focus will be on TMCMC. Since uh, the calibration options in the Dakota engine have already been presented in the previous COFIM tool training workshop. However, all new features which impact the Dakota engine calibration workflows will be explained in this training session. The UCST UQ engine is accessed by uh, picking the UCST UQ engine in the UQ engine drop down menu. The algorithms in this UQ engine are implemented by Professor Joel P. Conte's group at UCSD in collaboration with the SIM Center. Under the UCSD UQ engine, the transitional Markov chain Monte Carlo or the TMCMC is the only method available now. In the future, particle filters and Kalman filters are planned to be implemented. The references below give uh, details for those interested to know more about the algorithm. Uh, TMCMC was proposed in this 2007 paper by Ching and Chen, uh, and the implementation in COFIN closely follows the algorithm detailed in the 2013 paper by Minson, Simonson, Beck. In the use in the TMCMC, uh, when we have the TMCMC method, of, out of uh, there are four inputs, of which three inputs are required. And the other input, which is the log likelihood script, is optional. Uh, we will cover more details about this in tomorrow's uh, session of the workshop. Uh, here, the number of samples defines the number of samples which we want from the posterior. Uh, but in TMCMC, sampling is done in stages from a series of intermediate PDFs that converge to the target posterior PDF. Uh, and in addition to that, in each stage, uh, Markov chains are propagated from each sample for a few steps. Uh, therefore, the number of model evaluations is much more than the number of samples required requested from the posterior. So when we request 500 samples, it doesn't mean the model is only evaluated 500 times. So please keep that in mind. Um, and we can specify the seed for our pseudo random number generator in order to achieve reproducible uh, results. And we need to provide the data in a, sub in a, in a calibration data file. Um, next, we will see an example of solving a Bayesian calibration problem using TMCMC uh, in COFIN. So consider this two-story building structure shown in the figure. Um, the response of this structure along the X direction is considered. The structure is modeled as a two-story 2D shear building in OpenSea. And the, the realizations, the idealizations made and all the constraints are shown in the figure. 
Uh, so in the end, only two degrees of freedom are active. Hence, there are two natural modes of vibration. Uh, by doing modal analysis, the following results are obtained for the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Uh, to obtain these results, we use the true value of the story stiffness, uh, which is defined in this box here. Uh, but for a real structural system, um, there are parameters of the FE model of that system whose values are unknown. And we wish to estimate such unknown parameter values using some measurement data, um, typically obtained by using sensors deployed on the real system. So to demonstrate this BASM estimation concept, uh, the first and second story stiffnesses, that is the K1 and K2 values, are now assumed to be unknown and, and their values are to be estimated from some measurement data. And we will simulate a set of measurement data uh, by adding uh, statistically independent zero mean Gaussian noise with 5% coefficient of variation relative to the true values of the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of the first mode. So this is how we, uh, this is the data which we want to use in order to estimate the values of K1 and K2. Next, we'll describe how to solve this problem uh, in COFIN. Um, on this slide, the way the model, the inputs and the outputs are defined are, sh are shown. So in the FEM panel, we provide the uh, model script, um, which is a finite element model de defined in OpenSeas. It consists of technical commands. The model script accepts input values. It builds the model. It performs the analysis and it writes the results to file. Um, so also to know, keep in mind is that in the RV panel, we define the inputs K1 and K2. And within the model script, uh, there is this keyword P set, which tells the model that these are, uh, these will take inputs which are coming from COFIN. And on the QI panel, we define the quantities of interest. There are two quantities of interest, which is the eigenvalue and the second component of the first eigenvector. Uh, so within the model script again, the results are returned to a file called results.out. And within that results.out, the values of the, eigen, uh, the eigenvalue and the second component of the eigenvector are written to this file. So that describes the model. Now we also need to provide the data to COFIN for calibration problems. So for all the calibration workflows in COFIN, the data has to be passed in in a separate file. So here um, we have this data set which has been uh, converted to a calibration data file for being passed into COFIN. Um, there are some requirements on the structure of the calibration data in this calibration data file. Each row must contain data from one experiment. Uh, the length of each row must equal the sum of the length of all the response quantities. And the order of the response quantities must match in the data file and in the results file from analysis. So we first have the eigenvalue and then we have the eigenvector in the data file. So, Next, we will show how to run this example uh, in COFIM by doing a demo. Uh, in order to load this example, so in the examples menu um, in COFIM, so we pick this example, the steel frame based in calibration using TM TMC option. So this will auto populate the required entries on each panel that will enable us to run the calibration example. I will go on to the demo. Uh, and you can all follow along on your installations of the app. Let me get out of my slideshow. Yeah. Should all now be seeing my COFIM uh, screen, COFIM application. So I will go to the examples uh, menu button and I can, I'll select the steel frame based in calibration example. So the other example which Hungry discussed today can also be found in this menu. Uh, so the 2D truss global sensitivity analysis uh, examples was uh, what Hungry explained today. So now for now I will load the steel frame based in calibration example with TMCMC. So now we see that it has automatically filled in all of these fields. 
um, for in, in all of these four input panels and the result panel is empty. Now I will run this example and it will take a few seconds to generate 100 samples. Uh, but in the meanwhile, while it is running, I want to show you uh, what is going on in the backend in the workflow. Uh, we see that a number of these input options are being processed first. We'll go into more detail uh, if time permits tomorrow. Uh, but uh, finally, the TMCMC algorithm is started. And in this file, we also see that even though we have requested only 100 samples, the total number of model evaluations run so far is uh, around 4,500. And all the results are written to files, which we will uh, show tomorrow. Now, coming back to COFEM, we see that the results panel is now open and all the results are displayed. And in the summary tab, it shows um, the estimates of the moments of um, these parameters which we uh, calibrated. Uh, so we see that there were these two parameters, uh, K1 and K2, which were defined in the RV panel. But we also see that there are some additional parameters. Uh, so more of about this will be explained later in uh, tomorrow's session. Uh, but so we will have additional one additional parameter corresponding to each QI. And if we go to the data values tab, we can see each sample which has been obtained. As a, so we can see scatter plots of uh, samples of K1 and K2. And going back to the summary, um, we can find out what are the mean values and the standard deviation. So that brings me to the end of the demo. Now let me go back to my slide. Uh, we have some exercises for you. Uh, so these slides, as Sangri mentioned, will be available on the website. Um, and so you can look at uh, the exercises uh, which are described on the slides over there. So the first exercise asks you to do a global sensitivity analysis using COFIN. And so we want you to load the sensitivity analysis example. And we want you to try and change the distributions and all the parameter values uh, assigned to the RVs and compare the sensitivity in this thing, how that gets impacted. Uh, next, we can also draw scatter plots of each RV and the QI to see uh, visually what is the sensitivity of uh, the QI to each of the RVs. Uh, next, you can also try introducing the span of the truss as a new parameter. Uh, and you can add correlations between the variables and compare how that impacts the sensitivity in this case. Another exercise is for the Bayesian calibration with TMCMC. Um, so we saw that we used uh, five uh, sets of measurement data coming from the first mode of uh, first natural mode of vibration. Um, now, in addition to that, we have uh, data from uh, simulated measurements of the second mode. So uh, the exercise is to perform Bayesian calibration, again, to estimate the story stiffnesses, uh, but now by using uh, all of this data. Finally, to conclude, uh, here is a slide on some upcoming features which are currently under development. Uh, so we plan to introduce multi-fidelity surrogate modeling um, and Bayesian model selection or averaging. Um, and as we saw, so even uh, for the UCSD UQ engine, currently cloud computing feature is not yet available. So we will make that accessible for uh, both of the Sim Center UQ engine and the UCSD UQ engine. Uh, and any other user requested features, we would be willing to, we would be happy to uh, listen to your request. Uh, so please go to the Sim Center forum. And as an example, I just wanted to show that one of the features which I described today, which is reading and calibration data from a separate file, was actually a feature request made in the Sim Center forum. So we do uh, listen to your request and we do like uh, responding to your feature request. Uh, so please make use of that opportunity. Um, 
and that brings me to the end of uh, my presentation thank you and if you have any questions for us please we'll be happy to answer them thank you akash uh, thank you samari as well for your presentations um, at this point uh, we've been managing questions in the chat uh, and so akash uh, uh, unless there are some that trickle in uh, while we wait here um, uh, we're going to uh, maybe send out a poll for some questions um, let me start that poll uh, as a reminder to those of you, uh, please use the chat window to submit your questions. And um, in the meantime, while we uh, wait for those, we have a poll uh, that we'd like your uh, responses to. And the first one is, uh, have you used the QuoFem tool already? The next question is, what methods in QuoFem interest you? And that one's a multiple choice, so you can answer uh, you can respond to with, with more than one answer to that question. Uh, the third is, what other UQ or optimization problems of interest are you interested in? The fourth question is, what are the most desirable char characteristics for QuoFem? That's an, also a multiple choice question. And the last question in this poll is, how likely is it that you will use QuoFem in your research or work? Um, so go ahead and uh, find the poll window uh, somewhere on your desktop. Um, and if you're busy asking, uh, typing in a question, uh, send that into the chat and then complete the poll. Um, I guess at this point, uh, Akash, we've been manage managing to answer questions in the chat. So I don't think there are any for you. Um, anything else uh, you want to share or add while we uh, wait for the for people to respond to the poll? Um, yeah, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. And uh, tomorrow we'll go over um, how to, uh, so we'll go over the backend. Sangri will uh, go over the backend of Cofem. So if you want to explore what is going on behind the scenes, uh, so you can, uh, you'll get a picture of where to look uh, and how to troubleshoot if you face any issues. Uh, and we will also, uh, demonstrate some advanced topics. Uh, so in the TMC MC engine, for example, you can define a likelihood function uh, optionally. And um, we also have a new feature where uh, our response quantities need not just be scalar, but they can be vector quantities or field quantities in the Dakota terminology. Uh, so when we have that, we can, um, the error residuals can uh, be um, correlated. So there are options for you to define uh, more advanced covariance structures for doing calibration. And we will calibrate multipliers on the user-defined covariance structure. So that's what we will go over tomorrow. And we'll also uh, demonstrate that using an example of the material model calibration with a stress field uh, as a response quantity. So that's on the cards for tomorrow. Um, thank you all for coming today. Yeah, absolutely. I also uh, have posted a link uh, to register for Sim Center office hours. We're hosting office hours on Friday afternoons at 12 p.m. Pacific time, and we're holding them every other week. So this Friday, there are not office hours, but we have office hours the following Friday. Uh, and this is a time uh, for uh, open questions. Everyone joins the same uh, meeting here on Zoom. And it's a time to answer questions with uh, the Sim Center development team uh, to ask questions amongst community members. We have the option to set up breakout rooms so that if you have uh, questions for Songri and Akash, uh, we, can, we can direct uh, you to a separate breakout room and, and, and answer some of those uh, questions you might have. I'm gonna end the poll here and just share those results. So the vast majority, nearly 90% uh, of you here today have not uh, used the QuoFem tool yet, but we are glad to see the 11% um, uh, who have used it, uh, who've either run an example or uh, downloaded and run their own simulations. Uh, the next question uh, about what methods in QuoFem interest you, um, there is uh, Overwhelming interest in reliability analysis, 70%. Uh, also high on the list are global sensitivity analyses and forward analysis, so obtaining random realizations. 
similarly is deter deterministic calibration or best fit parameter values. Um, the third question, uh, what UQ or optimization problems interest you? Um, these are, uh, the majority is interested in designing under uncertainty. And we had 33% uh, for each multi-fidelity surrogate modeling and for Bayesian filters like Kalman, fil Kalman filtering. Um, and nearly 50% 50, 50 interested in uh, model selection or averaging. Our fourth question about what are the most desirable characteristics for QOFIM? And for this, it looks like uh, the winner is easy integration with different FEM models. So I'm not sure if that means different FEM um, uh, engines or uh, actual, uh, it must be other engines beyond, besides those that were, were implemented at this point. And we also have interest, strong interest in uh, diverse UQ capacity. So adding more advanced capabilities, which might include designing under, under uncertainty. And then uh, something that I'm very excited to see here uh, in the last question is how likely is it that you will use QOFEM in your research or work? And 41% have said very likely, and another 41% have said likely. 11% um, have said possibly in the future, uh, it might need additional features to make it relevant. So thank you for, for sharing those. Um, we will, as a reminder, uh, share another survey for, uh, for those of you uh, who registered um, to attend in person that will give us some additional feedback and insight into um, what other things we might need to offer in this training in the future or um, what ideas you have about the tool. And as a reminder, the best way to provide feedback on the tool or ask questions is through the Sim Center forum. Uh, the link was shared in the chat and shared by uh, Song Ri earlier in the presentation. Uh, but at this point, uh, this wraps up the day one tool training for QOFEM. Uh, we hope to see you back tomorrow for the topics that uh, Akash mentioned. So thank you uh, to Akash and Songri for the presentations. And thank you for, uh, for all of you for attending.